Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Tell Us More Live Experience. We are broadcasting live from Kilani in Johannesburg, South Africa. Excuse me, that was my mobile phone that went crashing to the floor. Thank you guys for joining us for another episode. It's going to be a fun one. We've got an incredible guest uh, who's been uh, doing some really dope stuff over the last couple of years. I want to talk a little bit about her experience in the lockdown and what she's been getting up to. But first of all, it's been a bit of a trying week uh, across the continent in particular. Um, but first, let's study at home, man. I wanted to talk about something that's been bothering me a little bit. You know, we're in the middle of a pandemic, a bit of a crisis. And the people that we've entrusted for our well-being, some of them are doing a decent job and some of them are doing gnolls. These last few weeks, we've heard stories of people uh, misusing uh, state resources and funds and not delivering PPE, which is really worrying and concerning, uh, considering that we have so many people on the front line who need this basic equipment to be able to effectively deal with what's going out in there. What's even more bizarre sometimes feels like the lack of accountability that exists within our society. Every every two years we're having an inquiry. I mean, guys, I mean, inquiry. Nothing ever happens. Two years of uh, documentation and talking about what's happening. It doesn't seem like anybody has to kind of uh, be held accountable or punished for some of these actions that are occurring. So we're hoping, I mean, it's a lot to ask for that there'll be some kind of change within our various uh, instruments of government and our institutions. Um, you know, there was lots of hope with our current incumbent president uh, that there would be some kind of a change. But, you know, we'll see what happens over the next couple of months. But we're hoping that everybody gets the resources that they require, particularly our healthcare workers out there, just to make their jobs a little bit easier, considering the kind of immense pressure that they're under with us being in uh, or heading towards some kind of a peak Hopefully, we'll find a, a solution that helps everyone out and, and, and that helps uh, people get the treatment that they require. Uh, across the border, our northern neighbors in Zimbabwe have also been having a, uh, a, a very difficult week. Um, news has come out of some human rights violations, a lot of people protesting on social media, but in Zimbabwe itself, uh, speaking out against the ZANU PF, who some are claiming have uh, kind of captured the state and are using those resources and not helping out the citizens of the country. Again, Another bizarre one, you know, uh, under Tawambegi's era, we used to kind of use this idea of, he called quiet diplomacy. Uh, I think it's when something's popping off next door and you just pretend nothing's going on. You you check on some Bose headphones and you're like, let's keep this sh moving. Um, but yeah, I think uh, Zimbabwe citizens and of course people across the continent have been tweeting and it's gaining the eye of uh, people all over the world. I don't know if the African Union is going to step in. You know, that's another bizarre organization. It feels like it's just a bunch of state leaders who hang out at a groove once every couple of months. Uh, and then they're like, yo, let's build. You know when you're at a party and it's like midnight and you've all been drinking. And you're like, yo, let's build. Let's create a, a dope society. And then you do the same thing every six months. Um, but we're sending love to everybody who is currently in Zimbabwe and, of course, the diaspora all across the world. Hopefully, you guys also find some kind of solution over there. Things, crazy things happening in Beirut. It's a jungle out here, but you know what? We we have to uh, try and focus on some of the more positive stuff. Uh, I've been, I'll be honest, I have been avoiding the news completely, completely. It's just too much drama. I've just, I've been, I've been watching reruns of The Simpson uh and uh, a tv show called Shit's creek i don't know why i watch Shit's creek to be honest i'm still i like dan levy and i'm rooting for him but some of the characters are incredibly b bizarre um but i do love uh, moira's accent on the show she's great she's got a lovely regal voice um but like i said we're going to be moving it across uh to something a little bit more laid back a little bit more relaxed because it's intense we don't want to stress you guys on a wednesday evening you came to see a little bit of of uh, something chilled and now you are hearing crazy stories so we're going to switch it up a little bit and i'm going to welcome on our guest for this evening's op episode an incredible talent who's joining us for a second time i guess we did a, a episode of the podcast 
available on Spotify and iTunes. But now we're doing it live via satellite all the way from the tough streets of Santon. Please welcome the wonderful Lesikho Trabi. Beep, 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 beep. 1980s. I was sweet dreams made of me. <laughs> how I'm are sure you? I'm good. How are you? I'm chilling, man. Do you have a real drink? Because I've, I've only got the H2s. I do. Always how prepared. Ah, ah. <laughs> <laughs> I saved well. And we bought before. Yeah. Well, look, Kilani's not far from Santon. Um, wh what are you doing tomorrow? Um, uh, I'm super busy. My mom says I can't go out of the house and pass Glen Hove, so... No, I mean, we're implying we'll come to you. You know what I mean? We're not going to expect you to do a drop-off. I will off. be in house tomorrow, so... <laughs> 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 um, I've been following you over the last couple of months. You've been doing this really cool uh, and interesting series on Instagram Live called Convos and Cocktails. Um, first of all, like, what is that about and how did it come together? It's super dope. I've really enjoyed it. How did that come together? Thanks. Um, so I was kind of having girl talk. I'm like a girl talk person. Every single day at work, it's always politics and news. And I mean, that's cool. And that's what I do. But sure. I love girl talk. I love gossip. I love like just catching up with the girls. So <clears throat> I kind of have those conversations on Twitter as well. Yeah. And I just thought, yeah, I have these conversations everywhere except, and everyone's doing an Instagram live, but everyone's Instagram live is more like, let's interview you on your career and let's get to know <laughs> behind this and this. And I was like, okay, <clears throat> I want to do Instagram live, but I yeah. really don't want to talk to people about the things that they talk about on like, you know, every other Instagram live. So sure. how about I get people who are like kind of in the popular space, but let's just talk about shit that girls talk about when no one's listening. Let's talk about guys. Let's talk about dick. Let's talk about, you know, interracial relationships. <laughs> um, yeah. So that's kind of how the concept came about. And it's been fun. That's super dope. I, I saw you recently talking about LeBron James, who I, I think you and I love him for the same reasons. He's uh, right. athletic prowess. Oh, uh, <laughs> what happened <laughs> this week? You, you were chatting about LeBron and uh, South African men were in their fields. What was going on there? That's the thing about South African men. Why do you guys always center yourselves in conversations that have nothing to do with you? Um, but like LeBron for me has never been Bay. He's always been, I mean, I like basketball as well anyway. He's always sure. been a good player, the best player or whatever. But mm -hmm. he's never been that guy that like all the ladies were looking at like that, you know? Um, yeah. Until he came out in this two piece <laughs> that was made by God for LeBron James. Like he sewed it on to those quads and it was the first time we really also got to see like his body body because basketball um uniform or whatever it's called is kind of yeah. baggy and <laughs> you know, all dressed in super wacky stuff but like he went and got this tailored for the quads and i live and breathe his thighs um his height you know it's just those things that we get to fantasize that we don't see here like tall men <laughs> 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 Don't get here. So <laughs> that's why South African men were angry. It's because he's like everything they're not. They're not. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> it's one of those imports that are very hard to find in South A. Um, but I mean, you know, you're talking about LeBron's kind of what he'd been wearing recently. American basketball players have got incredible dress sense. Do you think South African men kind of can compete with that or, or we're far behind in that regard? I think South African men are still stuck in what you know, like, oh, I don't want to be gay or whatever it is like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, hashtag no homo vibe. Um, so I think it's really sad, actually, because, mm. you know, people won't wear pink. People won't wear shorts. Someone was even saying on Twitter, like, oh, a grown man in shorts. And I was like, um, it's summer. Why wouldn't he wear shorts? So, sure. um, and it's tie dye and pink and whatever. So I think there's still like toxic masculinity that seeps through everything in SMN, um, including mm -hmm. how us, but you know, topic yeah. for another day. Oh, oh wow. um, yeah. <laughs> bombs dropped. Um, yeah, but I just think <laughs> that it's just silly because it, it's it's very much about this toxic masculinity thing. The guys will go out and like LeBron's basketball jersey or like an Arsenal jersey every single day. Um, <laughs> Taylor, instead of wearing pink, instead of like looking dope, and you know who I'm talking about because I'm talking about you. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Oh my goodness. <laughs> 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 I 
<laughs> I mean, it's like, I, it's interesting because my partner, sometimes she'll order an item of clothing and then I'll try it on, like a jacket. Or, or And it's, it's really dope. And she, she kind of hates that shit, that everything she rocks or owns like sits really well. Why do you think men are so scared to try all this shit? Like, I know you touched on the toxic masculinity, but it seems like we've got like some kind of a uniform. Like you said, soccer jerseys, denims, and some trainers. It's like, where the fuck do people learn this stuff? I don't know. I don't know. You guys have to tell us. I don't know if there's like, you know, those men's conferences that they were joking about or uh, like WhatsApp groups that were not allowed in. But it's just, it's like really sad. Plus our celebrities, I guess maybe that's where people would get the trends from. And, mm. um, you know. <laughs> it might it might be it might be the the guy in the Under Armour tracksuit pants who's yeah, fucking the sort of you know, Uzi sweatshirt um <laughs> like shit like that. I don't think there's <laughs> there's much inspiration in the streets. I mean, it is tricky when you look at it like that. I mean, I'm trying to think off top who would be like a fashion icon in the country. I'll come back to that discussion. Uh, of course, your, your quarantine. Famous. I don't think they're famous. Say that again. I don't think the fashion icon would be someone famous. Like, I can't think of anyone famous who dresses, like, really well. I, I think some guys who are famous dress mannequin well, as in, like, what's happening on the trends and stuff. But sure. I haven't met a lot of famous guys who dress, like, trend, like, forecasting well, like, doing their own thing. Um, like fashion forward type people. Yeah. I feel you. I mean, um. It, that is that's an interesting thing. I think we do have to unlearn a lot of stuff people taught us about just how we look and how we associate that with gender. Um, yeah. You're talking about South African men. You're you're currently quarantining with family. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> There's no back door that is for guests only. No. Um, I do have a question. My cousin. <laughs> I was I was talking to um, David Guy recently, and he was talking about this idea of snacking. What do you think of breaking quarantine to get you a little some some you know a little bit of afternoon delight for your mental health, if anything? For your mental health, okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I'm pro it. <laughs> I don't want to get arrested for my views or whatever. But like, look, if I had a snack, baby, it would mm. be a long time, a long time ago. Okay. Um, some of us are surviving on ever ready batteries. So, oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> well, I definitely would take a little gander down the road. Um, but I mean, it's hard, man. How do you even know who's got this thing? Because it's also like so many people are showing up asymptomatically. Um, mm. so at the same time, I'm like, Ish, <laughs> I don't know. But it's also <laughs> I don't have an option right now as so, well. You know, I don't, I don't judge those who are getting it though, guys. Oh, hi! It's been a long yeah <laughs> sometimes you gotta risk it all i saw someone who posted a photo then i was like i know that lounge and that's not your house <laughs> you remember yeah. that series that trend that was like what you would do for the d and like this year people would die for the d and I, you know what i feel you i feel you you'd risk it all i mean it's really tricky sometimes you do what you gotta do um but uh, hey it, it, it's 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 hard to kind of negotiate those two things of going out into the world i know a big thing for you is kind of traveling and so you know with the kind of lockdown you haven't done that as much as possible what do you miss the most about like being out there sure so much so much i'm like i like new cultures i feel like i learn a lot when i go overseas um mm. the safety factor just like walking down the street and not worrying about people and men trying to hurt me um sure. But fuck, I just love this. I love exploring new places. I love, and like it's very rare that I'll go back to the same place as well. Italy is one yeah. of the only places that has touched me enough that I'm like, I think this will be a repeat offender for many years to come. But oh, wow. I just love going to like new places, exploring different. Uh, first of all, the world is also really beautiful. I think Joburg yes. is unfortunate to just be surrounded by like trees and houses and you know, whatever, but um, the world is really, really pretty. So sure. I'm a visual person. I love aesthetics. I love beauty. Um, so, yeah, and I just love different cultures. I love men. <laughs> I'm kidding. <Yeah. laughs> I just love traveling. I love traveling for all the reasons, except I hate flying, which is a weird thing. Oh. Um, you... I super hate flying. Because I'm really bad. I can't sleep on long-haul flights. Like, So I always get arrive at a place with two hours of sleep, and then I'm a wreck. No, I try, I've, I've been self-medicating sometimes on long haul flights, like a little bit of rescue remedy and a glass of red wine, and then it's night-night in the hallway. <laughs> um, because I'm just super, like, for me, 
turbulence is death. We are going down. It is great. Like it is, I'm that person. I'm like, okay, wow. I can't believe this is the way I die. People are like, oh my God, it's just like a speed bumps in the sky. Like, don't tell me that shit. Like it's going down. Okay. Just prepare. I'm oh. so happy. I'm so happy you said that. Cause I'm the same. I'm like, you know, when you clutch the seat and you've like, I get super intense and then I'm like, okay, man, I'm like, you know what, me and you, it's, it's, okay? I have, to ask, I have to ask, what are your top five places to be and why? I'm a big fan of um, London, New York, Scotland I fell in love with. What are kind of like some of your favorite places that you've been? Uh, the Amalfi Coast, Italy. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, so London and New York as well, but for like yeah. nostalgia reasons as well, because I lived there for some time um, sure. and have friends there. So, but New York actually, even on its own, is just magical. Um, mm. Cuba, Havana, I loved. I feel like I was a Cuban in a, in a past life, honestly. Mm. Um, and it was like New Year's when we were there, Buena Vista Social Club played us into the New Year. Oh, the most perfect holiday, honestly. Um, and right. I like islands. I like Mauritius, Seychelles, Reunion. I like those places. I'm a big water person. Like I'm, you, it's very difficult to get me out of the water. So anywhere where there's a big body of water, and I can jump into the pool, jump into the sea, yeah. snorkel, um, dive, or whatever it is, uh, good for me. That's fire. I mean, oceans stress me the fuck out. If I must be honest, I like them. <laughs> the idea of them, no, because like. There's something so immense about that a, a body of water like that, and like you could just disappear. Like I always have that fear. You could, but I, I just feel like it's safe. You can't just like drop, you know, like you can from the sky. Like it's <laughs> can carry you. You can swim. Um, it's I, I love the sea. I love the sea. I'm not even. I'm not scared of the sea. I know that people are like oh sharks and those things exist, but like I'm super comfortable in the sea. I'm literally a dolphin. I think if humans and animals can have like cross lives i was probably a dolphin in a past in your life. last life yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's dope. it's uh i was just thinking now when you talk about oceans i i forgot about my fear of oceans and then i went on oh ship and i didn't click until like i heard bum, bum, and i was like oh shit we have a fear of this and we're stuck for three oh, days have you, yeah have you been on oh ship and like because that shit was the wildest weekend for me no i don't like i don't like a lot of people <laughs> <laughs> I'm not <laughs> that kind of situation is overwhelming for me and to be stuck on like a ship where we can't leave um is team too much. I mm -hmm. also don't like things that would be described as a bash. You know, like <laughs> <laughs> what makes why would you call it a bash? I'm kind of offended for, for DJ after DJ and whatnot and people and you get the wristband and then you just like party for like three days. Like it just makes no <laughs> sense. Oh my god, that's horrific. Um yeah, I can't. I can't do shit like that. I would rather go on a boat to go on a trip somewhere and then come back to land and sleep in my hotel. I can't sleep, party, drink, eat on one on one ship. Now you make a little bit of a young friend here. Go, go, hey girl, it's me. Come up to our cabin. And just everything about it just sounds like a complete nightmare. And then Titanic. It's not as bad as you think. I was freaking out. I thought I'd have a horrible time on there. Then I was like, whoa, this is rad bro and then i just went in for three days i, I also don't like partying that much it's not like a lot of party that's like a lot of non-stop party it's it seems like you're you're maybe more of a dinner party kind of person kind of hanging out with friends and family yeah, and, and I like bars place. as well and like quiz night and karaoke and shit like that like i'm not like a club person things that are too full and too rowdy for too long is like you're it's too much. Get me out of here. Get me out of here. So like living um, on, a, on a club or whatever. Yo, I, imagine going to like Taboo and not being able to leave for five days. It's not like that. It's not, <laughs> it's not, you're, not like, you're not like sleeping on the second dance floor. There's like It's all secluded and there's floors. and <laughs> Grooving all the time. You wake up, you go back to groove. You go to sleep, you eat lunch quickly then you go back no. no there's basketball courts there's pools there's a casino there's restaurants look well, i don't know why i'm talking like i have shares in this I actually i don't like, give a fuck you, Mr. Chip? <laughs> like why are you selling this to me <laughs> I, I take I all the feedback i don't work 
I think I parked um, the years where also it would make sense. Like maybe in my twenties, it would have been a consideration, but mm. now close to like three song, um, I'm good. I, I You're done with that life. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, you mentioned karaoke earlier. Um, my go-to song is um, a whole new world. Don't you dare close your eyes. What would be what would be your rhythm if we were at a competitive karaoke night? Well, I do karaoke all the time really well. In New York, I did Beyonce Get Me Bodied. And mm -hmm. the karaoke planner people asked me to join their karaoke in Brooklyn because this was in Harlem. Yeah. And like performing or whatever. And they were like, oh my God, this was really great. Please can we put you in as one of those like plants? Like come to the Brooklyn one. <laughs> And so I would say something like that because I can sing that song really well. It's a very difficult song. Sure. Um, but I like doing things in groups and stuff. Like I would do a duet. Um, I tend to do like American Boy with like a boy. <laughs> um, yeah. Or I like Destiny's Child songs with my friends. Mm. Um, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> <laughs> but those are the kind of things that I like. I like r and I like group things, duets, fun yeah. things. Don't That's fine. go to karaoke and sing. You know, just have fun. Like I don't want people to sing ballads. It's not like we're not it's not shell road to fame. You know what I mean? We're not trying <laughs> to look for the next artist. Just have fun and just sing a little bit and just like do a, a bop that we can all enjoy. <laughs> a whole new world. I, think... I don't want to go to karaoke with you now. <laughs> I think you just gave away your age when you said Shell Road to Fame, but we'll we'll listen <laughs> over that. Um, Beyonce just released Black is King. A lot of people raving about it. Some people even writing kind of academic uh, little articles about it. What do you think about kind of the attention that, first of all, Beyonce gets from people in general and how they uh, – what's the word I'm looking for? Because she's got lots of love. Yeah. And there's people who, like, intellectualize what she makes. What do you think um, of that? I mean, I don't know. I like Beyonce, but I'm not, like mm. – Beehive or whatever it is, so I'm not. I did not stay up until three a.m. <laughs> I actually watched Black is King. I've seen clips here and there, but I'm like, you know, I'll see it when I see it. I don't want to watch two hours of music videos at the same time. Um, <laughs> so, like, I like her. She good. She fun. I'll yeah, go I was gonna say, you're gonna get us lots of hate mail, but carry on. Uh, no, I mean I like her. I'm not saying anything bad. I'm just not like, woo. I didn't go to Global Citizens, for instance, but I did see mm -hmm. her live in New York. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, I like her. I don't know what else to say. <laughs> She's nice. No, She's no. Nice. <laughs> I'm just intrigued by like someone wrote um, someone wrote this article about like blackness should not necessarily be associated with um, uh, kind of royalty and being regal because like you know kings aren't great to their citizens. It was just a whole piece of like how we view ourselves through other people's lenses in essence. I mean, I I get that, but I also think that this is just an interpretation. She wasn't saying she is going to solve Africa's identity crisis or mm -hmm. people who live in diaspora. I think she's just doing an interpretation of The Lion King, which is what she, yes. she was doing. In and the that's video, yeah. She made this much of a brouhaha when Black Panther came out, which to me was more offensive because of the accent. <laughs> <laughs> it's a terrible movie, but whatever. Um, but I feel like, yeah, and poor Chadwick was here by the time... <laughs> Like four months in, he was just like, <laughs> but um, that's more sort of stereotypically weirdly African. Um, yeah. But I feel like her being a woman and her being Beyonce, it's easy mm. to just hate on her for no reason. Sure. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I don't really lose sleep over people's opinions of Beyonce. I feel you. I, I, so I read the article, then I went to her website and I saw the video where she's kind of got her hair done. She's like talking on a patio and it's really dope, like a lot of cool imagery. And as you scroll down, there's like, she's got a, I think she had set up a testing station in Houston for COVID. And then she also like wishes uh, a bunch of people like, like, um, um, from, from Master of None, Waith, Lena Waith, like she's, but it's everyone's like cool baby pictures. It's really cool. So go to her website and just scroll down to the bottom, I whoever's think watching. You're biggest fan. No, no, I'm not like, I'm, I'm intrigued by what people want to find. <laughs> what? Have you been to a wedding? You know, like, wow. Just no, say you're, no, you're no. <laughs> this is what we're talking about with toxic masculinity. Men don't like admitting it, but I'm sure you also were here with, the moves and the choreography. I I'm not ashamed of saying I messed with Beyonce. I'm just saying like I was <laughs> I was trying to get 
both sides of the story. Hey, yo, I so, that, I that broad, man. Yo, I, I, I like that, but like, yeah, I can, I can, I can check it out there. It's all right. <laughs> okay, I, I will say this: there were times growing up where I really wanted to sing the lyrics to uh, Spice Girls. What's it? If you want to be my lover, and I was like, this is not the place. Just, <laughs> just because we'll get unwanted attention over here. <laughs> I mean, I like, I love the Spice Girls. I'm a Spice Girl girl. Like, Were you a fan in the nineties? Like, you remember the movie with the yeah. red bus, and then there was all the merch. Um, I had a friend. I, had um, yeah. I watched the movie. I had the shoe. I had everything. Spice Girls. Everything. My mom was so upset because <laughs> that shit was like. <laughs> Um, and it was expensive, but I was like, listen, I'd rather, I'd rather you leave me and uh, like, give me up for adoption and not buy me the stuff. Um, wow. so, school I went to, my friends always made me fucking Mel B and I didn't want to be the black one. I wonder why. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't want to be this one. I, I did I was 40. Like I was such a tomboy. Growing up. So I was like, guys, I'm happy twice. They were like, um, <laughs> I mean, I was me in the school. So <laughs> I was like, okay. Oh. What a disaster. Um, oh, I, I, <laughs> you were speaking about schools. I know earlier in the lockdown, you kind of were highlighting what some of the school experience was. And I remember going to Northcliffe and just being like, man, these hair policies are bullshit. And who they, it seems like the people they're trying to police don't look the same. Um, yeah. what, if, what, what do you think kind of has been happening over the last few years? It feels like kids are becoming more outspoken and are standing up for themselves and also kind of have access to technology that allows them to come together. I think that's the biggest thing. Is social media allows people to, from a lot of schools, because even though look, the St. Anne's girls where I went to school were standing up, there were a lot of us alumni who were able to be part of the conversation because of mm. social media. Um, I mean, I wasn't even the person who started that conversation of St. Anne's. It was sure. brought to me because of the following I have. Um, yeah. yeah, I think... Those of us who went to school in Boma O's, uh, I gradu graduated, whoa, I'm a trick <laughs> Okay. Um, I graduated I'm a trick in 06, and I definitely had these conversations. I definitely tried to bring things up to my principals, to yeah. my teachers, and nothing really came of it. And I was also like, and I think my parents, like our parents also didn't have the the literature or the, or the experiences, they went to schools where there were only black people. So they mm -hmm. didn't know the nuanced racism that comes with, it's not quite the K word. It's the, it's the ones we're talking about, the hair policies, the ones that's yes. embedded in the structure of the or school. Or being loud and that kind of stuff. Like being told you're going to go back to the township, being called Shabin Queen, just like yeah. really bullshit ass, but very loud racism. And I was having a conversation with my friends yesterday, actually, and we were talking about how black kids were also unfortunately complicit in in this racism because yeah. we were thinking about like the ground staff and how we used to be and even the black teachers that came to the school were very you know they had uh sort of more like a zulu accent or a tosa accent whatever it was sure. and we'd make fun of that we'd be like oh my god mr what what is so you know and to the oh, point no. we left our school because we were rejecting blackness in them in ourselves mm -hmm. like, um, and it was easier to reject it in them. Therefore, we were kind of saying, like, we're not black like that. You know, oh, my God. Yes. This was obviously, like, primary school and stuff. But even the way we treated, you know, the ground staff, the way we treated kids that came in that maybe came from different backgrounds. And there weren't many because, obviously, yeah. it was fucking expensive. But just, like, yeah, looking back and just being like, fuck, okay. And this is internalized racism was also as much as a problem as, you know, racism from white kids. Um, and white teachers. But I think it's just coming out now, especially also because Gen Z, I think it is, after millennial. Yeah, um, these young and these punk ass kids. Yeah. People born in, after 2000. Um, <laughs> they kind of expect to be in a world that's free, uh, in a world that doesn't sort of resemble a butt dead. We were kind of grateful for being the first and yeah. you know, maybe wanting to be a bit quieter. But now they're like, there's nothing to be grateful for. This is my rightful place. And there's many of us. And now we can actually mm. stand up when I was at school, at some point, there were two of us black girls in the grade. How are you Yo. supposed to stand up and say something when there's just two of you? You know, That's hectic. So I, I tried, but also I got punished every single time I did to the point where I was like, actually, maybe this is not a good idea. Maybe I should shut up. <laughs> <laughs> and then I won't be attention all the fucking time. <laughs> I mean, you've, you've kind of just brought up this idea that 
I think we want to, a lot of people want to assimilate and be a part of a group. And in attempting to do so, they have to discard certain parts of who they are. And there's a danger to that, that I think doesn't just exist within like school system. I think when we talk about society in general, like, I'm okay. okay I, I want to frame this like this is a very tricky statement because this is like this is a uh, sparked by Angela Davis's book, Race, Women, and Class, which I read a couple of months ago. And just like even capitalism, we sometimes just buy into it and we're like, fuck it. And and that is also kind of an oppressive system. Do you agree with that? Or, or, or what do you think of that idea? Um, I mean, of course, I think capitalism is very bullshit. Um, yeah. But I also think there needs to be some line between sort of socialism, communism, and capitalism. I don't think you can just mm -hmm. go through on communism because we've seen what that's done to countries too. Um, sure. But a country like South Africa can't thrive on pure capitalism because that's what keeps the rich rich and the poor yeah. extremely poor. Um, mm -hmm. I don't even know if there was a question there. Oh, why am I so distracted all the time? I need to investigate that. But um, Because of my LeBron hairline. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen it without hair. This is a new thing for me. It's, uh, um, what, what was the inspiration behind getting rid of your old, your old um, I don't know what, they, like dreads? I don't know. So, I, I, you know, when the lockdown happened, I was like, I want to keep this hair to remind me of these times. And then um, one day I just looked in the mirror and I was like, yo, fam, you look mad undignified. Like, it was just untidy. It was like, normally I can get a shape up. Oh, sorry. You know, like everyone's like haircuts on makeup for men. Like, I, yeah. Hold on, hold on. With, Without a doubt, but the way my hair, even now, it, if I had a shake pub, it would look a lot better. But it's just like this is the, it, it's growing in installments, it's just doing its own shit that <laughs> is just incredibly bizarre, and I hate it. But I wanted a fresh start, all right. Cool. And I cut it myself. Which, if anyone's watching, don't cut your own hair. It's like if you think this looks bad, fuck the back is or was an utter horror show. At least, it, at least it always grows, you know. I'm one of those people who's like, fuck hair, because it always grows back. My mom's always <laughs> like, why do you keep bleaching or cutting or whatever? I'm like, because it's going to come back. And then the time it doesn't, this is what this is for. <laughs> well, I'm going to say, if my family uh, is anything to go by, I might be running out of, um, you know, in video games when you continue. I think this, I might be, I might have two or three more years left of continuing. I, look, I've dated people with um, without the continuation. Black guys are lucky because the the bald thing looks good on, on you guys. Um, so just embrace it, babes. If it goes, it goes. <laughs> like, I'm, <laughs> I'm going full Joshua Doe with this shit. Uh, let's look, I want to read a couple of comments. Uh, we are broadcasting live. I want to see. Um, oh, I, forgot. I even okay, forgot. Someone that. Someone's asking. Jeez, wow, okay, I don't think we're going to do that. Someone asked us to do an impromptu improv skit. I don't think... Uh, thank you for the suggestion. Why do you keep asking for me? <laughs> <laughs> Why? <laughs> I was like... As I looked, I was like, that's not happening scene. Um, <laughs> Why do you keep asking for me? <laughs> oh, my Lord. Uh, you, you've done improv, yeah? I think you said when I spoke to you in London, you did a lot of like kind of performance art. Um, what, what is your favorite thing about doing improv? Well, my career is improv. I mean, Kels is mm. very improv. Um, and everything I do is fucking improv. The thing I like the most about it is that like, <laughs> I'm most creative. I think that's also why I procrastinate. I'm most creative in a hurry. <laughs> like when I only have yeah. time. <laughs> Um, <laughs> that's when shit is like amazing. Plus, I think, and I, you know, I'm actually gonna own this thing. I, I always hate saying it because it's weird to me, but like yeah. I'm funny as a person. So I feel yeah. like it's less contrived if it's off the cuff. I, sure. I, I actually even don't enjoy watching stuff that looks too planned um, because I think people are just naturally more funny when they're improv. Imp wow. I it's okay, it's a signal. <laughs> um, yeah i enjoy that because it, it creates a natural flow even this conversation you know like it's it's a flow you, you can't have too many talking. i can see when people are thinking oh my gosh what's the other thing i'm supposed to do and like so I things to come let's go yo oh, last week's you. episode was crazy. We had a guest from Namibia and there was like this five second delay. You ever watch the news where the person's like, 
Yes. Oh, yes. Uh, we are here at Cosato House and it was so bizarre. It's like, what have you found like most interesting about working in this current climate? Because we're learning things every week when we stream with someone, what works, what doesn't, what people engage in. What's kind of your biggest learning been in this whole like working from home kind of thing? Um, nothing new. I've been doing this yeah. before lockdown. I think you guys are joining my world. Welcome. Namaste. Wow. Um, this is my house. <laughs> because I've been doing digital and working from home since Carol started, you know, like that's mm -hmm. what I've been doing. So there's nothing really new. The only thing that's kind of new is, I guess, Zoom performances. So, you know, that whole thing where you make a joke and you're like, please put your mics on when you laugh. Thank you very much. <laughs> Uh, is everyone laughing? Just uh, you can type in the comment section, or you can oh, so it's that's awkward <laughs> to be like, "Oh, I'm performing now, but I don't, I can't see, I can't tell." Um, but otherwise, everything else, skits wise, uh, yeah. brand wise, I've been doing by myself at home. So it's just an extension. It's just yeah, it's just an extension. And it's now more of the same. Like, yeah, like we're going out a bit now. You know, we shot something with Donovan. Um, and Davina on Monday, mm. yeah. which was a campaign. So, yeah, people are, are more and more shooting outside the house now again. I did see those images. Um, it kind of had a beach set up. I'm mean, not going to ask too much about the project itself, but what I was interested in, what's it like being back on set? What's that world like? I've got a VO coming up soon, and I'm just like, I, I, I'm, I, I don't know what that's going to feel like. Um, this is not the first thing I've done on set. I did something like your, even when Cyril still allowed us to drink. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, it was a, this cooking show that's on Mzansi Magic. I think it's called Celebrity Mystery Box. So I shot that with my mom. Yeah. And yeah, so it's cool. I mean, people are very hectic, but for me, the temperature thing doesn't work. So <laughs> because you have to just trust and have faith and just be like, oh my God, I hope. But people test your temperature and mine keeps coming up at like, 32 33 and that's dead like that's dead legit. yeah you yeah you're dead <laughs> so i'm like this doesn't work because i can't be 32 degrees <laughs> um, unless i'm a vampire and i didn't know that which would be explain why i like the evening um but yeah i just think it's they're super safe they're trying everything everybody's always wearing masks they have fewer people mm -hmm. um but people are also kind of relaxing a bit more like people are like okay you don't it's kind of like that HIV thing, that the, the spike that happened in the 90s where people are like, you don't look like you got it. I trust you. Let's oh, do wow. it. I you stupid. <laughs> so <laughs> even with COVID, I'm like, guys, you can't look at someone and feel like they don't have it because <laughs> you don't have it. Oh, you've got to be, you still got to test. You still got to be safe. Um, wear your mask. Wear protection. So, yeah, I don't know. People are relaxing a bit more, which is a bit weird. But I can't, you gotta keep, you gotta go out and work. Like, you gotta make money. I feel you. I think uh, there is a bit of a relaxation in the beginning. It was tense. I'll say this for sure. I, I don't think anyone's still washing their hands for 20 seconds. I think that shit is long, <laughs> I, long time. But I think huh? the one, uh, I am, I am. Like, I'm still quite intense on all of the things because I interact with so many people. Mm. But I mean, I've been going out to restaurants now. Um, so I've relaxed oh, there a little bit. Um, yeah, no, guys, I, we've done it. Restaurants are open. I'm not breaking a law, but I can't also. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's enough. Living with your mom and your sister, your cousin, as amazing as that has been for bonding, it's like, it's like reached its enough point. <laughs> like, we need to go out to the house. <laughs> I was speaking to this friend of mine. He was saying, like, he enjoyed the first month of lockdown, like, finding himself and introspection and he's like i think i know who i am now can we open yeah. everything <laughs> i don't even give a fuck. like i mean i introspect all the time like i got to know myself before lockdown but yeah, yeah okay so, <laughs> i was fine for about the first 21 days that they said it was going to happen and mm. then i got intensely the fuck over it and i've been over it since yeah. um especially with laws that don't make sense to me and like you know, for once, the Karens are right. Like, where is the alcohol and the cigarettes? And the <laughs> I am going to, like, not even as hell, I'm going to join these marches for real. Bring back the booze. Bring back the cigarettes. Because, I mean, people are buying them anyway. But I just mean, like, yeah. bring them back to the stream so that we can, that we can support. Us. I'm not going to say I've been, I've been, yeah. Go I've ahead, sorry. Seen, sorry, I've seen parties happen as well, which I think is, like, 
is really disappointing to me. But I've seen like clubs and bars, like wide open DJs, alcohol. So at the same time, people are really living their best life. <laughs> I think there's, there, it, sometimes it does feel like there's almost two kind of lockdowns happening parallel to one another. Um, but everyone's kind of trying to find this balance. I wanted to know, I watch a lot of, do you watch, firstly, do you watch any ASMR? Ah, that thing with the sounds, no. no. Okay, uh, good so chat. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, it's so weird. Why do you want to be like, hi guys, this is the sound. Like, it's weird. That is like a fetish thing, I think. People need to... I find it incre incredibly therapeutic. Sometimes I'll put it on while I play FIFA competitively and I listen to that instead of the actual video game and then I don't rage as much while I'm playing. I think you might just have a fetish and you need to just admit it. And that's okay. Like, No, no the, I think, well, one of the ones I've been watching recently like, has I'm, to do with I'm rape. In the bedroom, like, <laughs> at that moment, <laughs> I'm enjoyment of it. <laughs> this is not going in the direction I had anticipated, but we're gonna we're gonna keep going. So I I watch like the Reiki stuff, and it's so interesting. Do do you believe in like alternative medicines, Reiki, and that kind of stuff, like chakras and burning sage or impepo, and and like are you an advocate for that kind of stuff? Yeah, I did Reiki last year actually, um, mm. and it was super cool. Um, I do, I do. I actually believe in it, which is weird because both my parents are doctors, but I actually believe in alternative medicine way more than I do, <laughs> um, which I think kind of gets my parents up in it, especially my dad because he's an actual practicing doctor. Um, sure. I think, I think I definitely believe more in Eastern medicine and also listening to your body to heal itself, things like that, um, because I really believe that like ailments come from from your mind rather than mm. from like the body um so i even read like louise hay who believes in healing through through affirmations rather than medicine um sure. yeah i actually don't even believe in maybe i don't even believe in eastern medicine i think i believe in psych like psychology healing the body mm -hmm. which is super cool and different but yeah sometimes yeah, i think i let my periods get too hectic though so I think yeah. our philosophies are not that different. I don't know why I'm being shamed for people scrunching papers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the same thing as Reiki, though. <laughs> <laughs> it is not <laughs> the same thing. But I do. I think Reiki last year, I thought it was really cool. Um, and I actually do think it worked, like, a lot. I, I can't even mm. get into how and why. But, like, yo, yeah, it was a great thing to try. Because I don't like you know, sort of traditional therapy as well and things like that. So I like alternative healings. I think I'm just like that person who will always do whatever's against the grain. <laughs> you're, I think you're rebelling against your parents secretly and I'm going to help you. <laughs> Maybe there's something, I think there's something psychological there. I would not be surprised um, mm. especially because they also, like there was a point where I was supposed to do like be calm and like all these things. So fuck, who knows? <laughs> that could be a whole thing. Oh my God. No Jack. That's it. That's so funny. I saw my degree on the bookshelf the other day and I was like, this has been utterly useful. Uh, <laughs> it's just laying there, just chilling, like a decoration. Games, like game huh? design. No, no, no. I, I studied a BSc in quantity oh, surveying, yeah. like which is in... <laughs> oh, did you did game design. One of you could yeah. be in game design. The, actually, so, this, it's interesting. So, there's a lot of Siphon comedians who've like... So Conrad has a, I think, an MA in anthropology. Riyad Musa is a doctor. Stuart has a degree in zoology. Kibuka was like comedy, though. That's why <laughs> we can't do comedy. <laughs> <laughs> be a comedy and laughter. <laughs> you know what I was thinking? It's July. I mean, it's August now, but July would have been kind of arts festival time era, uh, and people are transitioning and trying to do shows online that you spoke about really. Uh, as you spoke about doing recently, do you think it's sustainable? This new like way, this new abnormal of kind of like performing with no laughter and like this model. What do you think? What do you think is the next step of this this live experience? Well, what they've been doing for us now is like not so live live, where you like kind of go mm -hmm. pre-record live thing in like a studio. Sure kind of set up and stuff like that. So I think, but the thing is audiences and that that kind of thing is going to be a dream for a while. Um, mm. I really don't believe that you're like, I'm not that keen on performing live anyway, so I don't, I don't know if I'm too sad, but for comedian, <laughs> comedian 
I actually think it's going to be a while until you can perform in front of an audience. So whether you want to or not, adapt. <laughs> <laughs> the world is turning with or without you. Um, yeah, I just think it's, I think it's fucked and it's hard and it's whatever, but I think this is going to be the way for a while. I think gathering as an audience to laugh is like, I mean, it, it's silly. It's going to happen because yeah. people are breaking the rules, like I said, but it's super silly <laughs> because why do you want to die for, for laughter? You know, it's really it. tough. Tough about this lockdown situation is acts is being is having access to what's going on in the rest of the world, right? So, like in New York, they're doing these shows in auditoriums, they're outdoor shows, and it's like, oh shit, people are doing something somewhere. I think we're going to like at some point in the summertime. I mean, maybe they'll just do that distancing thing where because I went to the bank yesterday, um, mm. and you know, they put the chairs whatever meters apart that are supposed to be legal. So I think sure. at some point they might do that, which just means venues will be a lot less full. But mm -hmm. um, at restaurants, they say, oh, we're going to do a lot of social distancing. Tables will be this many meters apart. It kind of felt on Sunday like they've changed their minds and they're just like, <laughs> if you come in, you come in, okay? <laughs> Get with it. Like, as many people as possible, <laughs> you in or you out. <laughs> so I feel like that's going to happen with like comedy and shit. They're going to be like, come in or come out. Risk it or don't risk it. Stay home or get with it. Um, yeah, probably by the end of the year or by early 2021. I feel you will see. We had a slight break in transmission there. Are you still with us, Lisa? I am. It's on your side. It's definitely not mine. Okay, sorry. We had a bit, we had a glitch in the matrix. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. My word. Um, I wanted to ask, as we wrap this up, uh, if we could build the ideal specimen, uh, ideal person, the ideal, um, you know, part LeBron James, part James Baldwin, part Justin Timberlake, what what would we put no. into our lovely... Uh, uh, huh? What? Not Justin fucking Timberlake. <laughs> I was just throwing shit out. <laughs> that we yeah, throw so it back in. <laughs> <laughs> if, you could, if you could choose a few uh, characteristics to create because i saw you guys were were building a man like a builder bear i think um what would the ideal person or gentleman or or they what would they be like i think they would be a lot of nba people <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh into tall zork handsome actually not even handsome fuck that that's such an overrated quality but like Tall, yeah. dark, like sexy swag. Um, mm -hmm. I honestly, I keep saying this, and I think it's more like an affirmation. But like, God, please hear me. My husband is in the USA. He is from there. Um, I definitely feel like if I lived there, I'd be a career groupie. Like, I fully, I used to judge and be like, Oh my gosh, why would you want to just go around like sleeping with basketball players? I understand <laughs> it. Sorry, I am with you. Hashtag just sweet groupie. Um, yeah, I think it'd be LeBron. LeBron's because he's a basketball player, but he's never had like nuts in terms of um, loyalty. So him yes. in the thing, there's this guy called Ovi. He plays basketball in England. He's not. He's not, obviously not very good because he'd be in the NBA. But him, <laughs> True. John Wooden's like acceptance because Chrissy Teigen's crazy and wild, and I feel like I'm that same type of like energy. That's like a lot. So yeah. a kind of guy who's secure in himself to be like. That's my wife. Let her say what she wants to say. I'm just over here. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Like, uh, yeah. yeah. We're gonna we're gonna build this uh, person. We're gonna go in the lab, put on our coats, get to cooking. It might take us some time, you know. There's some regulations in place that are restricting our yeah. abilities. Um, but we hope we can find this person one day. But I just want to say thank you for chatting. This was lots of fun. I think uh, very laid back. It's been dope to kind of watch your journey over the last few months and then years prior to that. And um, uh, to everyone watching uh, right now or in posterity, do you have any last piece of advice that you can give them if they may be struggling through these, this time or, or just trying to figure out a way to kind of navigate it? Um, for me, it's been to create and to find hobbies. Like, mm. you know, I like makeup before, but now it's become a very important hobby for me and hair. So I would say find a mm -hmm. hobby, find something creative. Um, everybody, including doctors, has a creative side. And I feel like creative helps with your mental health, with your emotional health. So 
I would find something that you like to do that's creative and get going. If it's baking, mm -hmm. if it's makeup, if it's acting, comedy, and social media is your friend. Everybody can be a star now. Plug it in sure. and show talent. I mean, Kamizi's so got a cooking show. You know, I'm doing makeup all of a sudden. So don't confine yourself and restrict yourself to one thing. Even if you're a content yeah. creator and you're known as a comedian, branch out if you want. And that's there we have advice. it. Guys, go out there and get it. Lesejo, thank you so much for joining us. Sending you lots of love wherever you are in the world. Sancton, as we've heard. And uh, we'll chat to you soon, yeah? <laughs> okay, cool. Thank you so much. Bye. Namastizzles. Namastizzles, my nizzles. Uh, that was Lesejo Tlavi. That was fantastic. Thoroughly enjoyed that chat. Except for when we were judged for Reiki ASMR, which is a real thing. I know Lesejo can hopefully still hear me. Um, but thank you guys for tuning in. It's been another fun episode. This is great. It's nice to hang out with really cool people who are doing incredible stuff to find out what keeps them ticking, what they're doing for fun, and what kind of stuff we can do in our own spaces to keep us uh, going through this really bizarre and difficult time. Uh, to everyone who's been watching the episode so far, we thank you for your support. We hope you guys are doing okay wherever you are in the world. Sending you lots of love and light. And as the Reiki masters say, uh, start with the crown and work your way down. And uh, we'll see you guys very soon. Enjoy the rest of your Wednesday evening. If you're watching this uh, later on, click like, share with a friend. We'll see you soon. Okay, thanks. Bye. Brr.